Okay, so to test whether um, a maxim is permissible, what we're supposed to ask is whether, um, whether it could be willed as a universal law. So to test whether a maxim is permissible, what we're asking is whether it could possibly serve as the basis for making some end objectively good. Say that again. So in asking whether a maxim is permissible, we're asking whether it could serve as a basis for making some end objectively good if someone wills on the basis of that maxim. And um, that just means it has to be able to be willed as a universal law. So the test of the permissibility of the maxim is this. Is it possible to will the maxim as a universal law? Or would somehow everybody acting on that maxim mean that somehow its end could not be realized or maybe some other necessary end could not be realized. We'll have to worry about what that last phrase means later. Um, but you can think about it this way. Um, if it cannot be willed, if a maxim cannot be willed as a universal law, that's because there's some kind of practical contradiction in willing it that way, in willing it as a universal law. So impermissible maxims involve some kind of practical contradiction if willed as a universal law. Um, but I want to emphasize to you uh, that the claim is not that somehow if you act on an impermissible maxim, so let me say that again, an impermissible maxim is one that involves some kind of practical contradiction if willed as a universal law. The claim is not that if you act on one of those maxims that cannot be universal laws. Right. The claim is not that if you act on one of those maxims, somehow you will undermine yourself or violate some kind of agreement or commitment that you've made, or that you won't be able effectively to satisfy your inclinations or achieve your happiness. The claim is not that. It's possible, often, it's possible to act on maxims that cannot be universalized. It is possible, often, to act on impermissible maxims. And in fact, you might, if you do act on an impermissible maxim, you might even be able to achieve the end that maxim specifies, that you're striving to achieve with that impermissible maxim. But let me ask you a question. If you're acting on an impermissible maxim, if you're acting on a maxim that cannot be universalized, what's the necessary condition for being able to achieve the end of that impermissible maxim. I just said that sometimes you may be able to achieve your end, the end that's specified by a maxim that's impermissible. And now I'm asking you, when might that be possible? What's a necessary condition for your being able, for actually being able to achieve the end specified by a maxim that's not permissible? What makes it not permissible? So we have a maxim that's not permissible. You act on it anyway, like wrongly. And now I'm asking, I, I say, sometimes you may even be able to achieve the end of that impermissible maxim. And I'm asking, what's a necessary requirement for that to happen? Yeah. Um, if you don't universalize it, right? Like, if you it, don't universalize it, that's right. So I'm just acting on it myself. I mean, then it won't, the, the necessary contradiction that's come about won't occur if not everybody's doing it all the time. Exactly. 
So one requirement in order to be able to achieve the end of an impermissible maximum, maybe not a requirement, one thing that's necessary is that if I'm acting on an impermissible maximum, Think about this one. If I'm acting on an impermissible maximum, if everybody were to act on it, there would be a practical contradiction of some kind, and I wouldn't be able to achieve my end. That's what it means to say there's a practical contradiction if it were to be universalized. But look, maybe not everybody is going to be acting on that maximum. Maybe I'm the only one. Well, if I'm the only one, and nobody else is acting on that impermissible maximum, well, then there might not be a practical contradiction. I might actually be able to achieve the end specified by that impermissible maximum, but only if, at least let's say, most other people are not acting on it. Is that clear? Okay, now of course, if most other people are not acting on it, so it's a bad maximum, it cannot be universalized, most people are not acting on it. But now I take advantage of this opportunity to do so, because most other people are not. And I act on this maxim, and I succeed in achieving the end that I had with that maxim. Of course, uh, that end that I have with that impermissible maxim uh, is my end. I take it to be good, I take it to be worth pursuing, maybe it's subjectively good, but of course it's not objectively good. It's not made good by my will of it, precisely because it can't be made good, it can't be made objectively good by my willing it, it can't be made objectively good by anybody willing it, because it can't be made objectively good by this maxim, which can't be universalized. Is that clear? So that, that's a, look, that's a kind of failure. Not a failure to achieve the end there, but a failure to make that end good. Now, the last point about this, that same end still might be made good by someone else willing that same end on the basis of a good maxim. So that end is not made good by my willing it on the basis of an impermissible maxim. But different maxims could aim at the same end. And that maxim, sorry, and that end might be made good by somebody else's properly willing it on the basis of a maxim that can be universalized. So look, I'm thinking of like different grounds on which a shopkeeper could charge a fair price. Um, of course, that's also not the only possibility. Maybe that end really is something that would interfere with somebody else achieving their permissible ends, in which case it's just not permissible by, by action interfering with their legitimate pursuit of their good end, uh, that's not what this That's something you can't tell just by looking at the maximum. It depends on what else is going on. OK, questions about that? So the lesson there was supposed to be that it is possible to act on impermissible maxima. It's still a mistake because the end is not actually good. It's not made good by that maxim. Um, but my say, right? But um, but but the condition on my being able to achieve that mistaken end uh, is that other people don't. That other people don't act on that. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, one more point then. Um, it's sometimes thought that Kant insists that we try to get everybody to act on exactly the same maxims. Like this idea of universalizing means that everybody, everybody has to be the same. 
or everybody has to act on the same maxims. This isn't right. It isn't right, at least for many maxims. Because when a maxim has the property of being universalizable, what we're supposed to conclude from that is that we may act on it. That it's a permissible maxim to act on. So when it can be universalized, that means that it's permissible. Um, but it doesn't mean, but this does not mean that, so far, that one has to act on it. Being permissible is not the same as being required. And furthermore, it doesn't mean that I have to try to get everyone else to act on it either. All it means is that we all could act on it without undermining each other. That that maxim could be universal. Um, okay, so this is a test of permissibility, not required, not moral necessity for everyone to act on it. Um, this is important. Right? So uh, I consider whether to act on this certain maxim, whether I, I consider whether it's okay for me to act on a certain maxim by asking whether I could will that it be a universal law. If the answer is no, then it's not permissible. If the answer is yes, then I may act on it. But the test of having everybody else, imagining everybody else trying to act on it, doesn't mean that now I have to actually try to get everybody else to act on it. That was just a test of permissibility. Okay, but on the other hand, there are some maxims that are not just permissible. There are some that are obligatory. Some are required. Um, and the way to think about these is that these maxims are obligatory for all rational beings, for all beings with the will, because they are contrary. The contrary maxim is not permissible. Okay, so some maxims are going to be obligatory because their opposite, so to speak, uh, is not permissible. So, for example, um, uh, if it's not permissible to break our promises, a maxim of making false promises or breaking your promises is not permissible, well, that means it's obligatory to keep your promises. So a maxim of keeping your promises is necessary for everybody. It's required for everybody. And the way to think about that is it's contrary is not permissible. But the point remains that for Kant, many maxims are neither obligatory nor impermissible. That is, we have the option of acting on them. They're merely permissible. So let me say again, there are really three categories of maxims here. Maxims that are not permissible. These are ones that cannot be universalized. Maxims that are merely permissible. These are maxims that can be universalized and their contrary can be universalized also. And maxims that are required. These are maxims that can be universalized and their contrary cannot be universalized. So Kant certainly does think there are merely permissible maxims. Maxims that we are allowed to act on but are not required. I'll read to you just a short passage from the Metaphysics and Morals. He says, but that human being can be called, here the translation is fantastical or fantastically virtuous. Like maybe fanatically virtuous would be a better translation. But that human being can be called fanatically virtuous who allows nothing to be morally indifferent 